Hi everybody, it's Leone from WCKI and welcome to my channel. If you have not subscribed yet, please at the bottom here somewhere, <laughs> please hit the subscribe button as well as the notification button and that way you will be reminded or notified every time I upload a new video. Today I want to show you my famous cocoon wrap or many years ago we called it a shrug. But now we're getting fancy, we call it a cocoon wrap. This pattern of mine caused quite a stir on Facebook recently when I shared it. So let me teach you how to make your own cocoon wrap. We're going to start off with our slip knot like always. Let's just put it like that. Grab our hook and grab it and pull it tight. Now. In order for you to make your cocoon wrap, you have to measure from your neck down to your bum where you would like it to hang and then across your back from elbow to elbow and that will be the measurements that you're going to use for your cocoon wrap. Bear in mind that when you start with your, your foundation chain, if you want your piece to be let's say 80 centimeters across, do not crochet your foundation chain too long. Remember to measure it and remember that when you do measure just to stretch it slightly on your measuring tape so you can get the correct measurements because as you start with the next rows and continuing it is going to stretch out because of the movement, because of the thickness of the yarn, because of the size of the crochet hook and so on and so forth. Now I've done it now a few times where I actually make a swatch before I start and every time I get the measurements wrong because on my swatch I might have 10 stitches or 12 stitches um, and I might not have enough rows because the minute I start with the actual cocoon and I've done four or five rows you can see how it stretches out and I have can you see there in the back I've had to pull something out because it was way longer than what I anticipated it to be so let's start so with your cocoon wrap, you've got to work in multiples of two. So if you measure your cocoon wrap and you would like to have it, like I said, 80 centimeters across, in my case on the one that I've done now, 80 centimeters, charity chunky, seven millimeter crochet hook, I use 80 chain stitches for a 80 centimeter wrap. But please, do not just work on my calculations here. You have to test it. You might crochet your first two rows and measure again to see whether you actually do have the correct sizing and adjust from there. But So don't be disheartened. You might unpack the first two rows and start again depending on your tension and the wool that you are using. So in my case, I've got Charity Chunky. Now the, the wool asks for a five and a half millimeter but because of the cocoon that we're making and it's got to be a loose fit and it's got to hang you know you've got to see some shaping from hanging I have decided to make this one with a with a seven millimeter crochet hook I have tested it I'll show you later um, it looks nice it sits it doesn't feel so so dense or so thick like I found on the uh, pure gold one that I've used so yes so get started if you've got your yarn let's go with our chain stitches uh, refresh here quickly it's yarn over hook and pull through yarn over hook pull through yarn over pull through now I'm quickly going to pause my video and I'll get back to you now I am only going to make a swatch piece for the purposes of this cocoon wrap um, I'm just going to make a swatch piece for now to show you the stitches and then I'll move on to the bigger piece at a later stage. But for now, measure how many, how many stitches you would like. Test it if you would like the same way as I've tested mine. Charity Chunky 7mm crochet hook. So something that's going to be 80 centimeters from elbow to elbow. I use 80 chain stitches. I'll see you. I'm going to make myself some 20 chains here just so that I can show you how the stitch works and when I come back I'll reveal the stitch and there we have it 
I've decided to make 30 stitches uh, or uh, 30 chains, sorry, to start my little swatch for you here. Now, remember, multiples of two, so I've made 30 stitches. And I'm going to make one extra now for the turning. Then I'm going to skip the first stitch and in the second stitch from the hook. So there's my first stitch. In the second stitch, I'm going to do a double crochet. So that will be yarn over crochet hook. And let's make our first double crochet. Yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Now, if you've watched my previous video on how to keep the edges straight, I mentioned that I use stitch markers. And here's my little stitch markers. There's one. Oops. And I'll drop them as well. And there's the other one. So what I'm going to do now, because I've made my first stitch, I'm just going to put my stitch marker in there. So when I come back, I know that that is where I've got to put my crochet hook in for the final stitch for this row. And there we go. I've pulled my stitch out of sync there now. Let's carry on. So your first row, we've done our first double crochet, yarn over into the next stitch, another double crochet. And you will now go ahead and make double crochets in each and every chain stitch that you have. So if you've made 80 chain stitches plus one in the side for you to turn, you will have 80 double crochets. In my case, I'm going to have 30 double crochets. But now we go ahead, yarn over needle, bring through the loop, yarn over, pull through the first two, and yarn over and through the last two. I'm going to go ahead now and do double crochets right across this entire chain. There we have it. I've done my first row. I've done a double crochet in each and every stitch. Can you see how my work is curving? That can be a sign that I made my foundation chain a bit too tight. Remember I'm working with a 7mm crochet hook so I might have now pulled it too tight or because of the the way the wool stretches. If I do this, can you see there? So don't panic when you see it curving like that. This is when I realized that even with my foundation chain that I measured it and the minute I put the row of double crochets, it actually, because of the size of the wool and the size of the needle, the stitches were pulling, uh, pushing away from one another. So now I've just got to straighten it out slightly. You will notice that the more stitches and more rows we carry on with, it will flatten out eventually. So don't panic too much unless you pull it and it's so tight that it pulls back in like that again. Then you know that your foundation chain is a bit too tight and we have to redo the foundation chain. But there we have it. So row one is double crochets in each and every chain. So if you have made 80 chain stitches to start off with, you would have then added one in order for you to turn and you would then make 80 double crochets across your foundation chain. And that is row one. Let's go to row two. So for row two, let's go. Now there's my first stitch. I'm going to mark it now with my marker lying in wait there. So I don't have to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 every time. <laughs> Chain 1. And this row is cons consists of single crochets. So we've made my first chain and into the first stitch, put your, yarn, your, your needle through, yarn over, bring it through, yarn over and pull through both the loops. Another one, yarn through both the V's, like that. Yarn over, bring it through, and make your second stitch. I just want to put my stitch marker in, so I don't have to huffily count. 
let's just put that in right there now i know that's where i have to end when i come back on my next round you will see there's a bit of a loopiness going on here it's me and not getting my tension right now bear in mind that on your cocoon this is your edging that you're going to sew up to put the sleeves in so we are going to and the, the section that we don't use for sleeves that is going to be visible we are putting a, a ribbing around it so don't fret too much if it's a bit loopy here yeah? we we can work it away once we put the the ribbing on so now i'm going to continue with this row so in each double crochet from the previous round i'm now going to put in a single crochet so it's through both the loops grab the yarn bring it through yarn over and pull through one more through both the loops grab the yarn yarn over and pull through now continue making single crochets all the way up to your last stitch for this round so round one i mean row one was a double crochets row two single crochets once again once we get to the end of the row can you see i've got a bit of a curly going on here but again i'm not fretting about that too much i'm just going to pull it slightly straighten it out it will sort itself out as you start with your your pattern stitch now it will start flattening out as well okay we're at the end of this row i have to catch myself before i sit round again <laughs> now for my first pattern row i am now going to start off with three chains one two three now I'm going to use this three chains to replace my first stitch. Okay, so my three chains is going to replace my first stitch. I'm not going to move my stitch marker up now because when I come back with my next row, I know that my last stitch has to be into the top of my three chains that I've made here. So with my next row, when I come back here, my final stitch will be right in there. So start off with three chains. Now we come to the stitch that caused a stir. <laughs> it's very easy. Some of you might have really realized by now what it is. If you have watched the video where I talk about the wool, you will hear yeah, I mentioned the stitch. But for in case you didn't catch it there, ladies, we are now going to learn how to make the alpine stitch. And that is the stitch that was used on the cocoon shrug of mine or cocoon wrap. And this is how we make it. So start off with your three chains. Then I'm going to do a front post double crochet. But now we know we've got double crochets here and we have single crochets there. And I'm not expecting you to do a front post around your single crochet. Who knew? we are going to jump down to the previous rows double crochets so let's go yarn over for a front for a double crochet but now we're going to do front post so i'm going to put the needle in there grab the yarn pull it through now you do not want to keep it as tight as that because if you can look at the background can you see how it's buckling now what you want to do is you want to pull it up then through the first two loops, yarn over, last two loops. I've pulled it slightly too tight, but I'm going to show you now what happens if you pull this too tight. Your next stitch is going to be a double crochet. So now you've got to have a look. I'm just going to do a normal double crochet on my next stitch. Sorry, I just had to switch off the sound there for notifications. Now, when you position your crochet hook for the next stitch, that is the stitch that we've just made our front post double crochet in. So if you look at it in the back, you're going to skip that stitch. But remember, we've done the front post double crochet down there. So the next stitch is just going to be a normal double crochet. Like that. Can you see you've got a bit of a hole going here? Don't fret about that. It is going to fill in nicely now. Now we're going to do a 
front post again. So you go right down to the previous rows, double crochet, and do a front post. And remember that you pull it out slightly, and double crochet. Then we're going to do a standard double crochet, but again, see what happened there now. I just put the needle, the crochet hook in, and look what happened. I don't have a stitch open, so I would have buckled this thing completely. So you've got to make sure the first pattern row is a bit slow, because you've got to make sure that there's your stitch, skip it, there's the next stitch. You've got to make sure that you get it absolutely perfect on the first row. Or the first pattern row. Thereafter it becomes much quicker that you can fly through it. And there we have it. So I started off with my three chains, front post double crochet, regular double crochet, front post, regular. And can you see what happens if I pull it too tight? My double crochet looks short, very short. So let's do the next one. Right across this row you are going to repeat this. Now remember, we've got a standard double crochet here. So now we've got to go and do a front post double crochet right over there. Pull it up. Bring through the first two and the last two. And again, a standard double crochet. Put it through the stitch. Just make sure, yes, we've got it. There's the stitch. We skip that one. And into the next one, we make a normal double crochet. Whoops, not a half double crochet. Just a double crochet. And you will repeat this across the row. So front post double crochet, double crochet. Front post double crochet, double crochet. And remember, you dive down to the previous rows double crochet to do your front post double crochet. When you get to the end of your row, see I've still got two stitches to go here, one and two. Now I've done my front post double crochet, so this means that in this row, well now I've got to do a double crochet. And it means I'm going to end on a front post double crochet. But because we're at the end of the row, if I've got to put it in here now and I do a front post, it's going to pull my edge completely in like that. So what I then do in this case is that I just end with two double crochets. Let me just make sure I've caught them, but yes I do. So that is the end of your first pattern row. So you've established your pattern now. Let's just have a look here. Can you see minus buckling slightly? See when you do that you can see the buckle. I purposely pulled it a bit tight so you can see what's going to happen. So if I flick it over, let's first see here. Yeah, I've got one stitch, then I've got an open stitch. One stitch, open stitch. So that's also a way for us to check. But now because I pulled it too tight when I did my front post double crochet, can you see how it buckles? So you can now try and pull it, but if you've made them too tight, you will have to undo your row so they can lie flat. You can stretch it slightly, but because I purposely pulled it too tight, I'm not going to pull it out completely straight. All right. But you can flatten it slightly. If it flattens by just tugging it slightly, if you're happy with it that it lies flat, you may continue. But if you have noticed that you've pulled it too tight, I would suggest that you rather un undo this thing and then start again. Otherwise, you are going to have a completely warped cocoon. <laughs> right, and that is your first pattern row. Front post double crochet, double crochet. This will then be your right side facing you. So for the wrong side then, in other words, this side, this row will always be single crochets. So let's start. We've already done a single crochet row. Let's just do another one. So you're going to start off by just making one chain and then you are in each and every stitch you're going to make your single crochets. So it's through both the loops. Remember there? Through both the loops. 
yarn over and you make your stitch yarn over and make your stitch so carry on like this for the entire row of single crochets just to recap so when we started off our very first row was all double crochets the wrong side for our second row was all single crochets then row three we started off by chain three then a front post double crochet and a normal double crochet which resulted in an open stitch in between so now row number four single crochets throughout in each and every stitch from the previous row single crochets there's all my single crochets now as mentioned earlier when I started off this row I made my three chains and so I know that my last stitch must go into the top chain of my three chains so let me just put in my last single crochet there and we turn our work so that's what it looks like up to now so we've done four rows now and we've established our pattern so this row was a bit tricky because you had to watch your stitches so now from this point on it's been going to become much easier now all right to start this row once again I start off with my three chains one two whoops not like that though <laughs> three right now this one we did a front post this time I'm not going to do a front post here I'm going to do a standard crochet now please just be in mind and remember and I'll keep on saying remembering again today or remember today your first stitch is replaced by your three chains so there's my first stitch I'm not going to make a stitch there now because I'm using my three chains as my first stitch in here now right on top of my front post I'm going to do a double crochet and now I'm going to dive in between here and now I'm going to put my front post double crochet there now remember pull it out front post double crochet so on this stitch we do our double crochet again let's go again just make sure there's my double crochet open space and I'm putting my double crochet in there standard double crochet then front post and we pull it out and we do our front post double crochet look how pretty is that I'll meet you at the end of this round a uh, row I'll meet you at the end of this row here we are now at our second to last stitch we've done another row there so now I'm just going to end off by doing a standard double crochet into my last stitch there and there we have it and voila no I don't speak French <laughs> there you have it and that is the famous stitch on my cocoon shrug I'm just straightening it out a little bit and can you see my piece is lying flat now it's no longer curling and twirling and twisting it's lying nice and flat and that everybody is how we do the alpine stitch you will now continue in this way with a front post double crochet and a normal double crochet and on the wrong side facing single crochets across the entire row and this is the way you will continue until you've reached the required length if you would like to make a scarf from this this is actually a nice size for a scarf I've got 30 stitches on here so this is a nice scarf size so you can make it whichever or however long you would like to make it but if you are making the cocoon shrug 
if you've measured it that you would like to have it 80 centimeters across and 80 centimeters up sometimes you can make it in a perfect square of 80 centimeters or you can make an oblong one that it will be this side let's say for instance this part it will be 80 centimeters across but in the length from your neck down to where you would like it to hang only 70 centimeters then that is how you make it so you can make this any length you want my one that I've made the, the most of them or the, or the majority of them are actually rectangular um, but I've got two now coming up that is going to be a full square that I'm making so yes that is how you do the alpine stitch now I would like to see your cocoon shrug soon or cocoon wrap now this was only part one I will show you in part two I'll show you how to sew it up to make your armholes and then how to put the, the finishing off the ribbing and we'll crochet the ribbing as well. So see you in part two. Have fun!